Hey, everyone. Um, thank you, David, for the introduction. My name is Sean Chaudhry. I am the Senior Manager of Data and Analytics. And I am here to talk to you about SaaS security by the numbers. Now, before I start my presentation, uh, I want to give you a brief overview of what data is at Better Cloud. The data team was formed three years ago, and I joined uh, about two and a half years ago. We work as a Swiss army knife for the organization. We are a team of five. Uh, we handle, you know, Michelle handles sales ops, Rudy handles Salesforce administration, uh, Michael Matman uh, handles FPNA, and he builds a lot of our Tableau visualizations. Joe leads our team and handles everything um, that I've talked about, and that leaves me. I kind of work as, you know, the, so the quote unquote data guy. I've built a lot of uh, infrastructure around gathering data that exists in our company and trying to empower people internally to use that data to make better decisions. Now, another way of thinking about it is we are the central nervous system of our organization. You know, we empower people uh, in biz ops to make better decisions, product managers to understand all the data available so that they can stack rank, uh, features and understand what to work on. All in all, data powers everything at Better Cloud. And I, and I truly mean that. Uh, two and a half years ago when I was uh, sitting on this offer and deciding whether or not I wanted to accept the challenge and join Better Cloud, I received an email from David Politis, and he talked about how important data was in his vision for Better Cloud. And that really sold me. And it was really, it's been really great to kind of live that vision and help build out what, what data means at Better Cloud. So what is the purpose of this talk? I'm going to give you a quick disclaimer. I am not a product expert. You guys know way more about the IT industry than I do. I do know a lot about data. And as David alluded to, about six months ago, I came up to him because I was working on you know, aggregating data for our customers, trying to understand what you guys are doing in the product. And I showed him uh, an analysis, and he was like, whoa, like, we need to show this to our customers. I think they're going to love it. And we figured Altitude was the perfect place to present this to you. Now, what I'm going to show you is the first thing, the, the first kind that Better Cloud has ever done. It is our first external facing report for our customers. And it is a pilot program. We have never done this before. So feedback and comments are paramount here. We want to hear how you use this. Is this valuable? Even if it's not valuable, definitely want to hear this. If it is valuable, we can work to get that in the product roadmap down the line. We can work to understand how we can empower you guys to use this data to help you on your day to day. Now with that, I'd love to, I'm, I'm excited to introduce the Better Cloud Scorecard. Now here's what this looks like. Every customer here in this audience is going to receive a two page report. And the, the, the idea around this was, you know, Spotify is in the audience. And one of the, the ideas of when I was kind of putting this together was I wanted to create something similar to what Spotify sends at the end of the year, their year-end report of what you've been listening to. And they have really nice visualizations, and it makes you feel like you are a very valued member of their community. That was kind of the idea of what I wanted to do here. We identified a couple areas of our platform that we thought are incredibly important, and we wanted to show your usage in these, platform, in, in these areas. excuse me. And these areas are policies, administrator rights, and uh, data exposure or blind spots. Now, for the rest of the presentation, I'm going to dive into each section. And let me give you a couple caveats. In the presentation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, data for everyone in this audience. You know, all, I think it's 85 customers in this audience. Every number you see is an aggregate of everyone's actions or what they're doing in Better Cloud. When you receive your individual report, It'll be just for you. And all these numbers are year to date. So it's, you know, it's a great three, oh, we're three full quarters into the year. It's a lot of data for you guys to see what's going on. So let's get started. Policies. What are policies? Policies are actions, uh, excuse me, policies are rules that you put in place so that your employees do not violate. And for better cloud terms, in better cloud terms, that means you know, some of the when if then functionality that we have in, in our platform. In your scorecard, you're going to see policies uh, that you've done year to date. How many policies uh, you've executed, 
how many actions that actually leads to and how many connectors, how many current active workflows you have, things like that. In this room, you guys have executed 350,000 policies year to date. That translates into 800,000 actions. And that spans across 10 connectors. And that's pretty remarkable if you think about it. Let's dig, down, let's dig deep into that a little bit. 350,000 uh, policies run. That translates into 24,000 workflows uh, run each month. And you'll, you'll be able to see that. There'll be a uh, chart that shows your month-to-month -month usage. And uh, this is something I'm going to challenge you for the rest of this talk. I'm going to throw a lot of numbers and data at you. But numbers and data can only tell a certain part of the story. It's up to you guys to add the qualitative context to the data to really understand what's going on in your organization. And this chart should, you know, the way you can look at this chart is what key business events have triggered increases or decreases in your Better Cloud usage throughout the year? And some of these key uh, business events could include um, user lifecycle ma ma uh, management, a sudden onset in hiring, um, migrations from one system to another, a cleanup of groups, Adding this context to understand how you're using Better Cloud will make you much more valuable to your organization and then understanding how you can unlock the true ROI of Better Cloud. The next thing you're going to see in this scorecard has to do with actions. Now, you're going to see a bar chart of all the actions that you've done ranked by how many times you've actually executed it. And in this chart here, it shows the aggregate totals of every action in this room. And you can see a couple uh, themes here. First of all, they're all mostly related to user lifecycle management. You know, remove from group, add to group, delete user, delete two-step backup codes. This makes sense. Up until now, Better Cloud's most comprehensive use case has been uh, on and offboarding of user lifecycle management. But I think that does a disservice to the amazing work the product team has done recently in releasing non-Google actions. And you can see here, the dark blue indicates how many of this is just Google actions. Did you know that we have 125 non-Google actions available to use within the platform? And if you don't know exactly what those are, I encourage you to go to actions.bettercloud.com. And there you can kind of look at all the actions that we have, build, uh, build your own policies, and kind of see what's going on um, and what's, what we have to offer. I want to talk a little bit more about actions and actually adoption. So, you know, some of the, as I was building these scorecards, I could see that the, the usage from customer to customer varies. And I want to talk about what a typical customer adoption has been recently. This customer here that you see in this chart, they signed up in the beginning of the year. And you can see February, March, April, they weren't really using policies that much. They were just getting their feet wet with Better Cloud. But then in April, they met with the expert advisory group headed by Mike Stone. And there, they were able to unlock the true value of policies. They were able to help, Mike Stone and his team were able to help institute policies directly within Better Cloud. And now you can start to see consistent usage of policies and actions for this customer. And I, and I really challenge and encourage you that if you're not seeing this really substantial use of policies in your, in your scorecard, that means that you're not getting the most out of Better Cloud. And you should definitely reach out to your customer success manager or to the expert advisory group and schedule times so that you can do that. Another, another uh, portion of the scorecard, scorecard will be around drive policies and audits. Now, Drive Policies and Audits is a great tool that we have, and it allows you to create an audit for, for example, a social security number. You want to check and run through every uh, Google Drive document to see if a social security number exists. You can do a one-time audit. Once you're happy with the results, you can institute a policy, and then any change in a Google Doc will be scanned by Better Cloud and ensure that it's adhering to the policy. This is one of the most popular features we have at Better Cloud. And some of these uh, areas of the scorecard might be blank. If this section is blank, I highly encourage you to reach out and talk to someone about it and get that set up, because it is a very, very powerful uh, tool that you can use. Now, I'm going to start uh, weaving in some insight from, we did a, a, 
a survey recently, 500 IT respondents on insider threats, and some of you may have even participated in it. 70% uh, of survey respondents claimed that their company was not doing enough to mitigate insider threats. Dry policies and audits is an, a perfect way that you can do that and get a handle on that. So I definitely encourage you to reach out and try and make sure that this is instituted within your, uh, within your organization. The last chart you're gonna see on the first page of the scorecard has to do with events processed. Now, Better Cloud often talks about how we want to be the, get, want to give you root access to your environment. And what you're seeing in this chart here is a running total over the last 60 days of all the events we've ingested from all the different applications that we support. In this room, we have ingested six billion events on behalf of you guys. We truly want to be the application that gives you security across all these uh, applications that you're using to run your business. And I think this chart does a really good job. And when you see on your own scorecard the scale of what Better Cloud is providing for you, I think it's gonna make you feel good about the relationship you have with us and why we do what we do. The next section has to do with administrator rights. What is a super admin? What is a global admin? You guys already know this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just define that anyway. A super admin has root access to the application and can make mission critical changes without any oversight. Every additional administrator causes linear to exponential growth in risk, according to CSO.com. And internally, we talk about how the best practice for the number of admins is two to four. And, but best practice does not always reflect reality, right? And we wanted to give you guys a really easy way of seeing where you sit versus your peers in terms of the number of admins that you have. So we created this thing called the super admin curve. Now, bear with me because it's a little technical and I'm gonna do my best to explain how to actually interpret this chart. You're gonna have eight of these on the scorecard. And depending on the apps that you've connected to Better Cloud, and if you have violated uh, the threshold that, that was set, you should be able to see how many admins you have. The way to interpret this is the y-axis is the percent rank or percent distribution. The higher the percentage, the more of an outlier you are versus your peers. The x-axis is the number of users, number of, excuse me, number of super admins that we have for each, uh, for each uh, customer. For example, in this chart, in this room, there is a customer with 40 plus Google super admins. They're at the 100th percentile, meaning that no one else has a higher number of super admins than they do. But how is this useful for you guys? What we did was we plotted your number of super admins on this curve. And what you can see at a quick visual glance is where you stack up against your peers. In this one, on this slide, it will just show data points from this room. But when you get this scorecard, you're gonna see data points from every single customer in Better Cloud. So what you'll be able to do is see what the average is for every Better Cloud customer. Are you above that average? What is the ideal number of super admins that you should have in your organization? You know, we, we talked about best practice is two to four. Obviously, sometimes in reality, that doesn't make sense. But if you're above the average, ask yourself why. Why do we have so many admins? Is this actually necessary for us to run our business? Two to four should be the goal. That alleviates the hit by bus concern, um, and, it all, and it also just gives you less, uh, risk and ex uh, less risk to worry about in your organization. So what you're gonna have for this super admin curve is gonna be available for every single application that you've connected to Better Cloud. Okay, still throwing a lot of data at you, we're almost done. The last section has to do with data exposure and blind spots. Going back to the survey, 83% of our survey respondents said that they were most vulnerable to some kind of data exposure leakage, whether that be confidential business information, customer data, or employee data. What does Better Cloud do to help mitigate some of these? Well, first of all, we let you know all the third-party applications that you've connected to your organization. 
And in the scorecard, what you're going to see is the top third-party apps sorted by users. And some of these uh, applications are, look very familiar. Evernote's in the audience, and we can all agree that they're a venerable company that you, know, you don't need to really worry about their permission score being very high. The permission score, the higher it is, the more granular access they have into your organization. The issue is, and you know, this goes back to what I was talking about, adding qualitative context to the quantitative data. You could have an application you know, with a permission score of 10 and a lot of users, and that's OK, because that's exactly what you intended when you connected them. The issue is, is when you have maybe two users for an application with a really high permission score, but you, know, you don't really know anything about the, this application. Maybe they're just a two-person shop based in Nigeria, and it's very, very sketchy. In any case, this is something that you guys need to be focused on, adding all the, the story to what's happening in your organization. And in that, only then can you truly feel like you have a grip on how to keep your uh, organization secure. The next section I'm going to talk about is calendar sharing. Now, quick anecdote. Our marketing team last year did a quick search to see the pervasiveness of public calendars. Um, and they were able to come across a senator's public calendar, their personal identifiable information, name, email address, full address, and a lot of other sensitive data that really shouldn't be available just through a Google search. This issue is just the same within a organization, um, especially here. The different types of sharing are public, where you can have um, any can, anyone with a link can access a calendar, and then external, where they're explicitly shared with someone or some people. The, number, the, me, the median number of publicly available calendars in this room right now is six, which doesn't seem that high, but every calendar can have sensitive information just hidden away in the invite, in the descriptions, things like that. That can be a, very, that can be a security vulnerability for your company. So I highly encourage you to use this table right here to understand the pervasiveness and the pre the, how prevalent public calendars are within your company. And then another thing from the survey that I thought was really interesting, 62% of respondents believe that the biggest insider threat came from a well-meaning negligent actor. I can't think of a better example of this than someone accidentally sharing their calendar and it containing very important sensitive information. Last section in the scorecard, files manage. In this room, BetterCloud is ma monitoring and managing close to 900 million files across all the applications that you use. The median number of publicly available files for each company in this room is 4,000. Now, I understand that public files is something that you know, some companies use and are, and are aware that they're using publicly available files to run their business. That's just part of their IP. They're, they're using it to uh, operationally, maybe things like that. But that number seems high for the median number for each organization. And I definitely think that the same idea with calendar sharing, there needs to be a lot of investigation going on by you guys to understand why this is so prevalent. Why are there so many publicly available files at, this, at, at our companies? And what can we do to mitigate this? I think the scorecard is going to give you guys a shed, shed light on some of the security vulnerabilities that you guys haven't really uh, seen, and it'll help you identify where in Better Cloud you can focus your time to leverage you know, all the functionality that we have. OK, so I've talked ad nauseum about these scorecards, and you guys are probably thinking, when can I see a mine? You should start receiving emails just now of if you are a current customer, you'll receive two emails. The first one will be a password-protected PDF, and the second one will contain the password. Depending on the breadth of your usage and the connectors, parts of the report may totally be blank. And that's OK. Some of you use BetterCloud in different ways, and you may not have uh, used all the features and functionalities that we've highlighted in these scorecards. 
But we definitely encourage you to understand, are you getting the most out of Better Cloud by not using these? And, I, and I've said this so many times, but schedule time with your CSM, with the expert advisory group, with, you know, with anyone who you th you've talked to at Better Cloud that can help you. Because these, are, these areas of the platform are incredibly important and can be very, very helpful to your for your day to day. The next thing is compare notes with your peers. I understand this data is very sensitive. And for that, we've taken measures to make sure that you know, it's password protected and it's PDF. You guys, it's not going to be laying around. There's no, your company name is not on these scorecards. But I think it's a really good opportunity to work with your peers here at Altitude to see what are you doing within Better Cloud for your organizations that maybe your peers aren't. Share ideas, share tips, share tricks. This is a really good way of just showing and, and actually using this scorecard in practice. Now, what is my call to action? I mentioned this before, but adding context to the data. You guys know so much about your organization that no one else does. But the numbers can only tell you a small, a, a small section of the story. Going back to the calendars, 100 versus one publicly available calendar. Well, what if those 100 calendars are just low-level employees who don't really have access to very important data versus that one publicly available calendar that is the CEO's and has every single data point that can be very, uh, very risky for, you, for your company? These are the kind of, this is the kind of context that you need to add to all the numbers that we're providing because Better Cloud won't be able to do that. And my last thing is feedback, feedback, feedback. We want to hear everything. Do you like these? Do you hate these? I'm around the entire week. I would love to talk to you about what you see in your scorecard. Maybe you can ask questions about what I was thinking when, I, when we put this together. Any questions, comments, feedback, I would love to hear from you guys. Um, and with that, I'd love to open for questions. Hi, uh, thank you very much for um, putting all this together. I think it's fantastic. I have one um, question. I think it's great that we'll be able to see um, the data uh, up against everybody's. I think if, uh, is it, would it be possible in the future to break it down by industry? Because I would really love to see what my fellow education customers are doing more than anything. Oh, definitely. Um, we would love to extend this out in, and allow you guys to cut it in, in various ways. And by industry is something we've, we've thought about. Um, for the first one run, we figured we'd just do a, a bulk kind of comparison against all of our customers. But in the future, we definitely can do that. You mentioned the cadence of the reports or the scorecards are every 30 days? No, no, no. So this is the first time we've done this, and the scorecard will show data year to date, uh, 2018. Okay. Will they be uh, in the future a real time dashboard of sorts where you can see that data? I would love that. So um, right now, the, the process that it took me to build these report cards, these scorecards, was uh, building manually building 85 of these, password protecting them, and creating a way to securely send them out to you guys. So I definitely don't want to have to do that again. Um, but in the future, you know, again, that's why I'm stressing so much feedback and comments because if a critical mass of you guys say that this is necessary and this is really important we'll have the leverage to go to the product team and be like, look, like, look how many customers want this feature. Like, how do we get this into the roadmap?